Good afternoon, everyone. I hope you've enjoyed your lunch, those in the room. We also have a very large audience online, and so we're going to start right on time and finish on time. So again, good afternoon and welcome to the 723rd meeting of the Economic Club of New York. I'm Barbara Van Allen, President and CEO of the club. The Economic Club of New York is known as the nation's leading nonpartisan forum for discussions on economic, social, and political issues. We've had more than 1,000 prominent guests appear before the club over the last century and have established a strong tradition of excellence. In every instance, every speaker uh, also answers questions, as, uh, as is the case today. I'd like to extend uh, very quickly a warm welcome to students from the NYU Stern School of Business, Columbia University, and Mercy College who are joining us virtually today, as well as members of our largest ever class of fellows, a select group of diverse, rising, next-gen business thought leaders. And on October 1st, the applications will be online for the class of 2024. Today, I'm truly honored to welcome our distinguished guest, the Prime Minister of Japan, Fumio Kishida. He has served in that capacity and as President of the Liberal Democratic Party, or LDP, since 2021. A member of the House of Representatives, he previously served as Minister for Foreign Affairs from 2012 to 2017. From 2017 to 2020, he also chaired the LDP Policy Research Council. Perhaps needless to say, he's had numerous achievements during his career in both finance and politics. We're delighted today to say he's the first Prime Minister of Japan to address our club in all these years. So this is truly a special honor. The format today will be a formal speech followed by a conversation and we're so fortunate to have Becky Quick, our club trustee and co-anchor of CNBC's Squawk Box as our moderator. The Prime Minister's speech will be in English, but for the conversation with Becky, he will speak Japanese. You each have a listening device at your seat for this part of the conversation for a translation into English. At that time, please turn in, tune in to channel one, and it may actually already be on channel one. For those listening for Japanese, I understand that's channel three. Please leave these devices on your table and our staff will collect them afterwards. As a reminder, this conversation is on the record, and we do have quite a bit of media on the line, and I believe we have 44 outlets in the room. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to introduce to you Mr. Prime Minister. It is truly gratifying to speak today at the historic Economy Club of New York to so many leaders in the world of finance. I'm delighted to be here in New York in the heart of capitalism. I, re I remember a cartoon in which the news announcer is saying, there was no trading on the New York Stock Exchange today. Everyone was happy with what they owned. <laughs> Yet, as I know, we would agree, it is the restlessness of capitalism that gives us growth and progress. It is this restlessness that helps us meet the future. That future has been tested recently. Over the past year, we've seen Russian aggression against Ukraine, soaring commodity prices, supply chain disruptions, and rampant disinformation. At this history's turning point, I have been determined as Japan's Prime Minister 
to tackle head on the issues we face one and then the other. Today, I would like to speak to you about what we in Japan have achieved over the past year, as well as we, what we are determined to do going forward. First, let's take a look at diplomacy. And we have faced any number of major challenges on diplomatic and security fronts. And there can be no question that the Russian aggression against Ukraine was history's turning point that ended the post-Cold War period. The Ukraine issue is a challenge that extends beyond Europe to the entire world order. So, what is the best option for the peace and stability of the world and of the Asia Pacific? I have thought about this a great deal since taking office as Prime Minister. First of all, I set out a fundamental reinforcement of Japan's defense capabilities. Supported by those defense capabilities, we have exerted every possible diplomatic effort to reinforce our relations with our allies and with like-minded countries. While the enhancement of our alliance with the United States, our true friend, uh, uh, goes without saying, we have also improved our relations with the Republic of Korea. The board went last month at Camp David. My friend Joe, President Yoon, and I stated, well, we will open up a new era of Trilateral Japan US ROK partnership. At the same time, I have also been very active under Japan's presidency of the G7. At the G7 Hiroshima summit held in May this year, uh, cooperation with the global south was one of the important themes. The leaders of India, Brazil, Indonesia, and other countries in the global south, along with the present president of Ukraine, held discussions around the same table. The result was significant achievement. We worked out uh, the fundamental approach on which the international community is grounded, namely that we will fully defend the free and open international order based on the rule of war. One part of my life work on the di diplomatic front has been nuclear disarmament and non-proliferation. I'm a Japanese prime minister with roots in Hiroshima. So you will understand what this issue means to me. And you will not be surprised that it was also an important agenda item at the G7 summit. I truly believe we achieved the major goal of having the national leaders encounter firsthand the tra tragic realities of the atomic bombings and commit to realizing a world without nuclear weapons. We also sent a strong and urgent message to Russia, uh, which has been recklessly uh, making nuclear threats. And I'm here in New York to attend 
the UN General Assembly. I stress uh, the need to return to the very foundation of human dignity, to change the, the specter of division and confrontation facing the world. I believe this is how countries can find a way to cooperate, overcoming their differences over their systems or values. Through such efforts, Japan, together with the United States, uh, with which we have forged a solid alliance, will continue to lead the international community. Next, I'd like to address the economy. For someone like me, who used to be a banker, the economy is a basic pillar of my administration. Last September, here in New York, I declared the, the revival of the Japanese economy through a new form of capitalism, in which the public and private sectors transform the social challenges uh, we face into engines of growth. These challenges include climate change, energy issues, and Japan's declining birth rate. Uh, since then, uh, we have formulated an economic package to fulfill this goal at the scale of 72 trillion yen, and we are getting the job done. The Japan's economic indicators during the past year are at levels not seen in 30 years. Uh, our annual GDP annual growth rate was 11.4%, uh, making at the highest, highest among major developed countries. Uh, domestic in investment is uh, forecast to surpass 100 trillion yen this year, breaking a record high in Japanese history. Although wages have been sluggish, labor management negotiations result in wage increases uh, greater than 3.5%, which exceeded price hikes, while uh, the minimum wage will also be raised by 4.5% next month. Meanwhile, as stock prices have risen to a level not seen in 33 years. We have also been working to tackle structural issues in the Japanese economy. Since the end of 2022, we made a major shift in our energy policy, and then we enacted the bill necessary to implement the shift. Also, dramatically strengthen our efforts to counter our declining population and the windowing birthday, which are Japan's top priority issues. Uh, we compiled a comprehensive package addressing children and child rearing that is at a totally different level than before. This package will raise the scale of poor children assistance for child rearing to the very top level among OECD countries. Uh, this autumn, I will commit to economic measures that place importance on two areas, uh, namely structural, structural wage growth and public and private investments for enhanced sustainability. And first, uh, we will place high priority on moving steadily ahead with labor market reforms 
uh, which have not made uh, sufficient progress. Uh, we will uh, press forward uh, by undertaking reforms to a three front set of advancing reskilling, introducing Japanese style job based pay, and facilitating labor mobility into growth field. I will, at the same time, work to create an environment in which women and non-Japanese can flourish. As for investment, we have enacted relevant legislation in anticipation of 150 trillion yen in public and private investment in environmental fields over the next decades. To accelerate a public and private investment beyond the environment to cutting edge fields such as AI, uh, semiconductors, bio, and fusion energy, we will formulate and then implement an investment assistance package that can compete with the rest of the world on every front, including a budgetary, tax, and regulatory uh, consideration. Uh, particularly with uh, regard uh, to AI, Japan is leading the Hiroshima AI process, uh, which was launched at the G7 Hiroshima summit. I take pride in the fact that not only am I the only G7 leader to have had a one on one discussion with Mr. Sam Altman, the CEO of OpenAI, uh, but uh, probably the only one to have created a general AI model at the university lecture during the summer vacation. Alongside this, uh, we will also uh, decisively carry out structure, structural reforms, an area where Japan's efforts have been pointed out as too slow. We will drastically expand NISA, the tax exemption uh, scheme for small investments, and make it perma uh, permanent. Uh, building on that, uh, we will reform the asset management sector as well as asset ownership, uh, which will manage the expanding funds. The funds uh, managed in the Japanese asset management sector have skyrocketed by 50% during the last three years and now stand at 800 trillion yen. Uh, we will push hard uh, to encourage uh, sophisticated asset management and to solicit uh, a new entrance. To start with, we will rectify Japan's unique business practices and resolve barriers to entry and we'll also introduce a new program to as assist new entrants. Uh, we will also promote deregulation to enable asset management firms to outsource their back office operations. To encourage new entry from overseas, we will establish uh, special business zones tailored specifically for asset management business uh, where an administrative uh, procedure can be comp completed solely in English. In these zones, uh, we will take measures to improve the business and living environment tailored to needs of overseas asset managers to ensure that our reforms uh, reflect the needs of global invest investors 
uh, I will launch an asset management program uh, consisting of U.S. and Japan institutions as core members, including those of you participating today. In parallel, I will strengthen the effectiveness of uh, corporate governance reforms. reforms. Uh, we will systematically uh, follow up the developments to encourage management to place importance on price book value ratio, as well as, well as to promote uh, formulation, uh, disclosure, and implementation of their business reform plans. Uh, this development of Japan's asset management business, leveraging uh, more than 2,000 trillion yen of personal financial assets, uh, will help uh, bolster the flow, uh, flow of investment. A win-win relationship between the U.S. and Japan which share universal values such as the rule of law and a market economy will be a great uh, contribution to the global economy. The vision I spoke today will be put in concrete action as a policy package. To garner support for this vision, uh, we will hold the Japan Weeks event this autumn and invite investors around the world. Uh, I would be delighted if you would join us in this endeavor. I met, uh, I met a globally influential investor uh, the other day who said to me, you know, Mr. Prime Minister, I've been watching the Japanese economy every year for 30 years, and I have never seen it more positive than it is now. I would urge you to evaluate what we are doing in my country. Uh, look at uh, the un underlying strengths of our economy and our plans for the future and then invest in Japan. I spoke, uh, I have spoken today about a turning point in history. Uh, this a turning point is not just something that historians of the future will chronicle and interpret. It is something that you can feel happening right now. When you see the suffering and the courage of the Ukrainian people in the face of Russian invasion, you can feel something important shifting. When you see the fires and floods around the world, you can feel the climate changing. When you see the advancements in AI in just the last year, you can feel the technological base adjusting. None of us know the outcomes. What I do know is that Japan and the United States share the values to help us meet these challenges, challenges together. What I do know is that there is no country Japan would rather stand beside going forward than the United States of America. And that is what I came to tell you today. So thank you for inviting me to speak to you and thank you for your kind hospitality. Okay. Uh, Mr. Prime Minister, thank you very much. Um, obviously, you've stepped into it a little bit and explained your family being from Hiroshima. 
and why nuclear disarmament is so important. But I was hoping you could just explain a little bit more about why you're so passionate and how committed you are to this goal. It's something you've been speaking about here this week. Hi. Um, Aiming to create a world without nuclear weapons, and that is my lifelong mission. I'm from Hiroshima, and that's part of uh, the big reason why I'm aiming for such a world. But at the same time, when we look at the situation surrounding nuclear weapons, I think we are at a major turning point. The world is at a major turning point. Look at the international security environment and you see that intensity is rising. And in this context regarding nuclear disarmament, we are seeing division in the global community. Sorry, I think we just lost the translation. Um, I'm not sure if you were able to fix it in the back, but let's try again. It sounds like the static just went away. Can someone, uh, could the translator speak to us again, just so we see if it's listen, if it's working? Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. Let me try to repeat once again. Regarding nuclear weapons, the international community has entered into a crucial stage. If we observe the global security situation, it's intensified and it's becoming severe. And the Russian threat of nuclear weapons is something real. We're facing that right now. Our predecessors have made great efforts in order to reduce the number of nuclear weapons. That effort had continued, and this declining trend of nuclear warheads is about to turn around to once again, once again begin to rise. That's the reality we face today. Because all the more so because we are in such an environment, we have to focus on disarmament and non-proliferation. I think it's time that we squarely face that challenge. So at the United Nations General Assembly, in my general debate speech, and also at the comment that I delivered on the occasion of the FMCT high-level event, which was co-organized by Japan, Australia, and the Philippines, I called upon the political leaders to step up their engagement to nuclear non-proliferation and make more efforts to mainstream nuclear proliferation. And Japan chair for a world without nuclear weapons will be newly established. And we're going to establish the Japan chair at major research institutes. And we will be contributing 3 billion yen to establish the Japan chair for a world without nuclear weapons at various think tanks. We've made that proposal. All the more so because the glo global community is at a major crossroad, I would like to read. Thank you, sir. Um, the Bank of Japan is meeting today, and Governor Ueda has already indicated that he may very well end uh, negative interest rates by the end of this year. Um, obviously, inflation is a huge issue. It's a 41-year high in Japan as it is in many other places in the world. Just politically speaking, though, if they did end zero interest rates, would it make meeting your political agenda more difficult because of the shrinking liquidity? Or would it perhaps be more helpful because it would strengthen the yen? Hi. 
Thank you. But the foreign exchange, it is important that exchange rates move stably, reflecting the fundamentals. In fact, authorities are in close communication internationally, and they share the understanding that excessive volatility is undesirable. So my government is closely monitoring uh, the movements in the uh, foreign exchange market, whether it is excessive at a high level of vigilance and will appropriately respond uh, to excessive volatility without ruling out any options. Regarding the interest rate or the monetary policy, indeed, in the case of Japan, basically, it is the Bank of Japan uh, that carries the huge responsibility. So it should be aiming for a sustainable and stable achievement of its price stability target accompanied by wage increases. And I am sure that the monetary policy will be implemented appropriately. Uh, but at any rate, uh, the government of Japan and the Bank of Japan, we will continue close coordination and while nimbly responding to developments in economic activity in prices as well as financial uh, conditions. We will nimbly respond in accordance with economic price as well as financial conditions. Let's talk about the new form of capitalism mm. that you and your government have, have been pushing. It's, it's very interesting because it's about redistributing uh, the wealth to shore up the middle class. And, and that's been something that uh, a lot of people are in favor of, but it has raised questions about where you raise the capital that will be redistributed. When you floated the idea of potentially uh, taxing stock sales or dividends, the stock market dropped. And, and so I guess I wonder, how do you raise the funds to redistribute to the middle class without scaring away investors? New form of capitalism. The basic concept of uh, the new form of capitalism. Distribution and growth. Uh, we're trying to achieve a virtuous cycle of growth and distribution. This is the major goal of new form of capitalism. And in order to distribute, there has to be growth. So that's our basic concept. So in order to attain that growth that is needed for distribution, we want investors to invest in our country. That is why I'm sitting here to advertise our nation to seek your investment. Based upon this concept of new form of capitalism, we will be implementing policies and measures. And as I touched upon slightly, in the past 30 years, there was no positive offensive attitude in corporate Japan, but that's happening for the first time in 30 years. And that's what I wish to notify to you. Take, for example, wages in the past three decades, there was not much growth, but in spring of this year, there was the highest level of growth and equity prices reached highs for the first time in 33 years. It was a record high. And 100 trillion yen plus investment is expected to be announced by the business circle. And in green transformation, public and private sector together will invest a total of 150 trillion yen. This kind of concept has been presented. So growth and distribution by achieving both, we are to create a virtuous cycle. And based upon this concept, we will be implementing policies and measures. And therefore, in Japan, we are beginning to see signs of offense in the Japanese private sector. And that's the, one of the messages that I wish to leave with you. 
and we want to make this a certain trend as we proceed into the next year and that's why in this autumn we will be announcing a new economic package to make sure that this trend becomes rooted all right so the things that you've talked about should be implemented by the end of the uh, the things that you've talked about should be implemented by the end of the year the things like um, moving regulation to make it easier for other houses to come in and set up some of the regulations should be approved do you think by the by the new year Investment. But that would introduce uh, superior technology, human resources, ideas from across uh, the world. And uh, that will raise the innovative power of uh, Japan, which would lead to the sustainable growth of uh, Japan. So that that is very important for us. By April of this year, uh, we set up a goal that by 2030, uh, the foreign direct investment balance should uh, be 100 trillion yen. So that fresh uh, goal has been established. In the case of uh, Japan, uh, between like-minded countries, we are advancing the establishment of supply chains in the strategic areas such as semiconductors. Investment from like-minded countries into Japan, of course, a capital investment is important, but we also welcome capital uh, participation because uh, that will lead to growth and business reform. So, of course, we will refrain from any rulemaking that would inappropriately hinder such investment. In addition, in enhancing the function as an international financial center, we wish to become the largest startup hub in Asia, or we want to streamline the status of residence permit for highly skilled foreign individuals, making more attractive for investment. Indeed, in the past, there was a tendency among some Japanese companies to avoid investment funds that were proactive in proposing management strategies. But more recently, many Japanese companies, in fact, welcome investment from overseas for the purpose of boldly advancing business reforms. And therefore, indeed, I sincerely encourage you to invest in Japanese companies and the government of Japan uh, will improve the investment climate. Uh, in, in April, Warren Buffett, the American investor, traveled to Tokyo and he met with the heads of the trading houses, the five Japanese trading houses that he's invested billions of dollars in. Uh, your message today is that Japan is open for investment. He certainly endorsed that with his trip and his comments around that. Um, did you see a change in, in foreign direct investment after that trip? And did you see additional interest that came in as a result? No doubt, as a trend, inward investment continues to grow. I mentioned that we will be hosting the Japan Week event coming fall. I think we are receiving much attention. For example, Mr. Warren Buffett is paying attention to Japan and many other people are paying attention to Japan. And in order to respond to such voices we want to create a venue to advertise our country and that's why we are planning to host this event japan week so this kind of virtuous cycle is beginning to be formed and in order to further promote such trend we will make much effort to further and better the investment climate, and that in turn will lead to more inward investment and more attention from overseas. 
you also talked about changing demographics and, and an issue that it's been for Japan. I, I believe that 29% of the Japanese population is age 65 or older. That's the highest percentage in the world. It's something you've been fighting for a long time. Uh, you touched a little bit about what you're doing for childcare. Is that what you see as the biggest impediment um, to improving the birth rate at this point? Because I know for the last 10 years, you've had success with getting home mothers from home back to the workplace. But at the same time that you, we've watched the birth rate fall below the death rate. It seems like every solution leads to another problem. But is this the biggest part of how you deal with that demographic challenge? Thank you. As you mentioned, on the one hand, the population has started to decline. In response to that, there are two approaches that the government of Japan is responding. First of all, the birth rate. To raise uh, the birth rate, incre increase the number of children. But if the population is going down, we have to adapt to that. And therefore, digitalization and uh, other systems will be used to raise the efficiency of the society and the community. So moving both of those in parallel, I think, are vital. The children and child care uh, policy in order to raise the birth rate Regarding that policy, in summer of this year, uh, the government has announced and prepared a drastic, unprecedented uh, policy package regarding this child care policy of Japan, which was announced this year. Uh, the important point is as follows. There are many benefits or programs or nursing care uh, or other facilities will be expanded. Of course, naturally, that will be done. But that alone does not increase number of babies. So facilities and the policies, they have to be usable, which means the entire Japanese society has to change the mindset. Uh, the atmosphere has to change. For example, in corporate businesses, in the company, if a woman is to have a baby, uh, then child care leave or uh, such leaves, holiday systems uh, for child care or birth. The system does exist, but without the understanding or acceptance, women will not be able to access those systems. They will be frightened that uh, she will cause trouble to her colleagues or they would not use uh, the system of such leaves, even if the institutions exist. If that is the case, even if we have the policies or if the companies have the systems, the children's number will not rise. So the social community, the company awareness, the mindset will have to change. So as a nationwide uh, campaign, we are trying to change the mindset. So under my administration, uh, this is the basic uh, perspective of the child care system in fact asking for benefits or applying for benefits regarding such support programs what the government has prepared in terms of child care policy if they are used and implemented amongst the oecd members it should be one of the top uh, level generous program but it has to be a society where people can actually use those uh, prepared uh, policies that has been announced this year in addition to those policies the population is going down and we want to reverse the trend but that takes time and therefore we have to adapt to the smaller population such policies are also required digitalization or many other technology will be fully deployed so that the japanese society and the community uh, will raise the efficiency so those are also implemented in parallel. So th those are the two aspects. Uh, by doing both of them in parallel, uh, Japan will appropriately respond to uh, the declining population. Mr. Prime Minister, we want to thank you very much for being here with us today. We are honored by your presence, and we appreciate your time very much. Again, Prime Minister Kishida, thank you. Thank you so much.
really excellent. So again, many thanks to you both for sharing your valuable time with us. And uh, by, on behalf of our board, sir, and our club members, uh, we wish you uh, the best and a successful visit and mutually beneficial relations between Japan and the US. If everyone could stay seated while the prime minister departs, he's got a schedule here. So if you don't mind, he's uh, going to proceed. And thank you everyone for participating today.